Before you listen to the Tech Talk Daily podcast, I have to ask, are the high levels of uncertainty you're experiencing keeping you from making bold moves? Are you able to clearly see and act on the game-changing opportunities that pandemic has created? I'm Daniel Burris, serial entrepreneur, global technology futurist, and disruptive innovation expert. And right now, you have a choice to make. You can react to problems and disruptions after they happen, or you can learn to accurately anticipate disruptions before they disrupt and identify and pre-solve problems before they happen, giving you the ability to turn disruptive change into your biggest advantage. If you want to take control of your future and make a significant impact now and in the years ahead, join thousands of leaders from around the world by becoming a member of my Anticipatory Leader System, where you'll get the latest insights, processes, tools, and virtual coaching that will give you the certainty and confidence you need to actively shape a better future for you and your organization. Go to techblogwriter.co.uk and click on Daniel Burris. Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, today's guest I last spoke to in January of this year, when the world was a very different place. Place. And a company called Seven Rooms was essentially founded in 2011 and venture backed by Amazon and Comcast Ventures. And Seven Rooms has dining, hotel, F&B, nightlife, sporting and entertainment clients in more than 250 cities worldwide. And last time today's guest was on, I learned more about how they were using technology to create personalised experiences because the experience is now more important than the product and the last best experience that anyone has anywhere has become the minimum expectation for experiences that they want everywhere. But now, Joel Montaniel, the CEO and co-founder of Seven Rooms, has got a different set of problems on his hands for his data-driven hospitality platform because, of course... In those 250 cities worldwide, the hospitality industry has been decimated this year. But there's an argument now, of course, that the hospitality platform that can help operators unlock the full revenue potential of their guest data is needed more than ever. But I suspect that the company has had to evolve along the way. So I want to learn more about how the business has evolved, how the needs of the hospitality industry has evolved too, and how by combining operations, marketing and guest engagement into one front of house solution, Seven Rooms is attempting to allow operators, is helping operators maximise profits, build brand loyalty and enable personalised guest experiences all through technology. But enough rambling from me, I'm excited to get Joel back onto the podcast, so buckle up. And hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to New York, where Joel is waiting to speak with us once again. So a massive warm welcome back to the show. But for people that missed our first conversation, could you just remind the listeners with a little about who you are and what you do? Sure. Thanks for having me back. I am Joel Montano. I am the CEO and co-founder of Seven Rooms. Seven Rooms is a platform for hospitality operators with a goal in mind to help operators better understand their guests through data and then be able to use that data to personalize the guest experience throughout the guest journey. Uh, We have customers all throughout the world and and, uh, it's been uh, an unexpected and uh, really crazy uh, past uh, really seven, eight, nine months uh, over, over 2020. Uh, but it's been a really interesting front row seat that we've had to see what the hospitality industry has has gone through. And it has been nearly a year that has passed since we last spoke. And of course, as we both know, the world is now a very different place. And I've got to ask, how have you met the challenges that have decimated the hospitality industry this year? Because I, I would imagine it's been an incredibly difficult year for you. Yeah, you know, I think like all companies, when uh when COVID really hit in March, uh, we had that that oh crap moment, mm-hmm. if you will, uh, because pretty much overnight, uh, the industry 
uh, changed. And more specifically, uh, many of the restaurants that we service had to shut their doors immediately. And, you know, the, the short summary essentially is we ask the question, how can we help restaurants? How can we help hospitality operators uh, when their doors are shut for dine in? And luckily, we had been thinking already about delivery and pickup before COVID happened. And we said, well, we were planning to do this anyways. Let's focus on enabling restaurants to still do business with their guests. Uh, only that will look a little bit different. So we really approached everything from a, how do we help operators do more with less? How can we help them do business in whatever business manner is available to them? And then how do we be a partner to them throughout uh, to really help them uh, withstand what's going on and, and hopefully uh, to the extent we can help them um, be successful through it. And I'm curious, have you been forced to pivot or or leverage technology again to create opportunities during that difficult time? Because it feels like that I think most of us have had to reinvent ourselves to a certain degree. I think that that's the really interesting part about yeah. you know what happened for us. Uh, what I can say is our ethos and our philosophy and our reason for being uh, did not change, uh, which is we want to help the hospitality operator better understand their guests through data, and we want to help them build a direct and personalized relationship. And we think that that's important because ultimately that's the most profitable and the most meaningful type of relationship that can exist between a restaurant and their guests. And so that was true since day one. That was true before COVID. And what I think is interesting is while that remained the same, what we did do is we we added on ways to do that. And in particular, when it came to delivery and pickup, we added in a, another way that a restaurant could build that direct and meaningful relationship with their guests. So we didn't necessarily pivot. I think what we thought was true before COVID, what we, what we wanted to bet on uh, remains the same. It just what's changed is how we do it. And, and we expanded to be able to do multiple things for the operator uh, to let them build that type of connectivity. Excellent. And like I said, when we first spoke it over a year ago, I would imagine that both of our needs and expectations as customers have evolved in the last 12 months. So I would expect that both of our customers too, their needs and expectations have evolved. So with that in mind, can you tell me a little bit more about how in a post-COVID world, we're going to see a new era of hospitality with those new expectations from guests and what kind of role seven rooms you expect to, or what kind of role you expect seven rooms to play in that future too? Yeah, sure. So if anything, I think there's a couple of things that we think are true. Uh, the first one that the first trend that we anticipate is that people will be will come roaring back uh, to restaurants. Uh, there's there's a lot of talk about the the roaring twenties uh, that happened in the 1900s, and I, I think we uh, I'm of the mind with others that there will be a, another type of roaring twenties where people really miss going out to eat. Uh, and really, they miss going out to spend time with their friends and family and, and loved ones. And I think restaurants will take center stage, uh, in particular with uh, people not being able to travel as much. Uh, I think that restaurants will be the, the place where, where they'll start to spend more of their money that would have gone towards your traditional travel. Uh, so that's the first, I think, good trend that we see in a post-COVID world. The second thing that is challenging, but also on the whole good uh, for everyone is I think the experience is going to need to matter more than before. And to speak more specifically about that, the type of experience the restaurant needs to be able to deliver uh, is now going to have a higher bar. And the reason for that is over the past, we'll call it 10 months, consumers have been at home. Uh, consumers have learned how to cook where they weren't cooking before. Uh, consumers had been ordering delivery and takeout, which has now become a part of their every day or every week. And so, you know, there's a consumer now that, that, that can have a really great meal at home. There's a consumer that can cook that meal themselves if they want to. 
So what does it take now to get someone to come out and spend money, and most times more money uh, on a meal, especially when they can conceivably have that same meal at home? So to me, it means that the experience has to be that much better. That ends up being the reason why someone would decide to go into a restaurant as opposed to having that meal delivered to their house or as opposed to cooking it themselves. And the role that Seven yeah. Rooms can play is really uh, the best way to create an experience that's meaningful for a guest is to understand that guest and what they care about. And so our job in the ecosystem is to really help operators understand their guests without having to do all the hard work to get that, that learning and then enable that data to be available to them at their fingertips and enable them to make better service easier, to make better experiences easier. And I'm curious, are there any trends in the types of conversations that your customers and, and, and clients are coming to you and asking for your help with so they can bounce back in that roaring 20s that you just described? Yeah, some of the interesting things we're hearing are, you know, how do we, you know, one of the, one of the, an operator is talking to uh, was basically saying, I want to reimagine the way that restaurants do business. Because I think if we go back to the old way, uh, we, we won't be successful. And in many ways, the old way uh, was already broken. It just took COVID to accelerate that and for everyone to realize how broken it is. And so some of the newer ideas that restaurants are thinking about is how do we make, uh, how do we make the restaurant a larger platform? So for instance, if the guests had a really good experience inside the restaurant, how can we help them bring that experience home? So for instance, how could I sell different products, different ingredients, different information or know-how uh, to help the, re the guests recreate that? And so almost it, it comes, comes the restaurants are starting to think about it as a, my restaurant is a marketing platform, and then I should be able to continue that relationship with the guests outside of outside of my four walls and into their four walls. So that's one of the newer themes that we're seeing. And then secondly, one other theme that we're seeing is just how do I, as, as we start to focus on experiences, how can I sell experiences ahead of time? How can I let the consumer know what's available, what they can choose from? Uh, instead of my, my server having to tell them about it for the first time and then for them to get really excited, how can I market and merchandise that ahead of time? And then the last trend that we're really seeing is just the, a richer, deeper understanding of the guest across delivery, pickup, and dine-in. You know, restaurants are really understanding now that uh, they need to be able to engage and market to guests across all of those different channels. So for instance, they need to be able to market to someone who orders delivery to come into the restaurant. And they need to be able to market someone who comes into the restaurant to order delivery or pickup. And so that's the third theme that we're seeing is really a, a wanting to have a more holistic 360 degree understanding of each of their guests. And there have, have been a lot of stories recently from big names such as Qantas and Ticketmasters suggesting that even when we do have a vaccine out there, there will be something like an app or something like that containing a, an immunity pass almost to access hospitality areas. And I know it's too early to predict this and you haven't got a virtual crystal ball in front of you, but is that something that you think we'll potentially see out there? I think so, especially for the larger operators, I think for hotels, yeah. uh, for larger destinations, I do think that that will come into play uh, really in a way to, to take less friction out of the experience and try to do it at scale. I know some stadiums have already started experimenting with it. Uh, and, and there's some players that have helped with airport screening uh, that are starting to provide some of that technology to be used in these commercial, more commercial settings or more hospitality settings. So I do think it's a really good option. And I do think for the larger stadiums, larger kind of resort destinations that they'll start to leverage that type of technology. I think it will make less sense for the smaller operators uh, to at least take on the hardware to do it. Uh, however, if there's a way that that can extend because you have that pass and that works inside the smaller restaurant, I think that can only be a net positive 
uh, for everyone. And are there any other tech trends that you think hospitality or anybody listening in the hospitality industry would need to be aware of in 2021 or, or just keep a lookout for? Yeah, I think that there's, you know, one of the other things that we're seeing is this concept of ghost kitchens. You know, this is something that is coming about more and more. Uh, really interesting area uh, because it it really hits out one of the biggest expense items uh, for restaurants, which is rent. And it really starts to reimagine what the cost structure looks like. Uh, so that's an area where I think restaurants and brands will have uh, optionality around and we'll see more and more in 2021. Uh, so that's one other place that I would expect to see more uh, more stories and more uh, discussion around. Fantastic. And it has been a turbulent year, a, depress- a depressing year. And there's so many words that you could use to describe 2020. But to end on a positive note, what makes you optimistic about entering 2021? Yeah, you know, what makes me optimistic actually is the the response of the restaurant industry. You know, I was talking about this with someone the other day and uh, and I was saying, you know, this is the this is one of the industries that has been hit the hardest and I'd put it in the cat- same category with air- airlines, uh same category with, you know, hotels uh and live events. I think restaurants and hospitality is right up there. And so you know, with that said, this is an industry that could, you know, be really downtrodden. This is an industry that, you know, has every right uh, to be super pessimistic and, and uh, negative about what the future looks like. And what inspires me is actually talking to operators that have the complete opposite approach. You know, they are looking forward to seeing what they can do. They're still fighting. Uh, they're still scrapping together the different ideas that they have. And they they want to really come out of this in a better, uh, different manner so that they don't end up back here. And so that's what makes me most optimistic about 2021 is you take an industry that has every reason not to believe. And they're not only believing, but they're making changes. Uh, So we want to be a a partner in that change. We want to support them as much as we can. Uh, So that's the thing that that gives me the hope is just their hope and their, uh, their activity around the future and their positivity around positivity around the future it does feel like it's going to be an incredibly exciting year there's going to be a lot of big changes i'm interested in where it will lead so for those reasons alone i'm not going to leave it a year before we talk again i think for our own sanity we need to check in every six months at least so i would love to get you back on again next year but just just to see how things are going but before i do let you go for anyone listening in the hospitality industry or want to learn more about the kind of work that you're doing at seven rooms could i just ask that you uh, remind everyone listening of your website and and how people can contact your team Sure. Uh, For any folks listening, please feel free to reach out to us anytime. Uh, We're here to support. So our website is www.7rooms.com. It's the number seven spelled out. Rooms is plural. Uh, You can reach us anytime through our website. You can also send us an email at info at sevenrooms.com. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear how we can help. You made so many great points in today's episode, in particular about how we need to reimagine how restaurants operate. And and I think you're right in what you were saying there, that it, it isn't just COVID that made this. It, a lot of the old way of doing things was broken anyway. It's just kind of accelerated things. So I am looking forward to uh, 2021, the roaring 20s. I'm going to uh, hold you to that one, hopefully. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you coined it first. <laughs> But more than anything, we'll get you back on next year and we'll see how things are going. But uh, thanks again. Yeah, Neil, I'd love to be back on. Thanks for having me. At the beginning of the year, I spoke with Joel about transforming the hospitality industry. And given the state of that industry right now, I think a catch-up conversation where we could explore where we are now, everything that we've been through and where we're heading in 2021 was absolutely critical and I cannot thank Joel enough for taking the time to come on here and share that story with me today and that journey that he's been on. But for anybody else listening out there, if you're in the events or hospitality industry, I'd love to hear more about your insights, your experiences, the stories and the journeys that you've been on this year. That's why I built this platform and I'd love to give this microphone to you as well and maybe we can all learn from each other through these stories. 
So please email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com. Tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. And my website is techblogwriter.co.uk. Keep those messages coming in. And if you want to come on the show, well, I'll save a space for you too. But thanks for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.